One year ago today, I wrote in this notebook everything we'd need to accomplish if we wanted to build our own home here. Each day that passed presented new obstacles and challenges to overcome. Learning skills as we went, we took this plot of land in the middle of the forest and transformed it into an off-grid oasis. Today, we're retracing our steps over the last 12 months and sharing the path we took to realizing this dream. Come along. Hey everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all had a great holidays and before we get too far into today's video, we wanted to let you all know that going forward starting next Sunday, January 22nd, we are going to be posting at 12 p.m. Eastern and that's because our community has really grown over the past year and we now have so many friends joining in from Australia and Europe and so many cool places around the globe so now everyone can see it on Sunday. Yeah, so hope that helps everyone's schedule and makes things <laughs> a little bit easier. So 12 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. And to do that, make sure you click the subscribe button right there and turn on the little bell. It will always notify you when we have a new video. So over the holidays, we had a lot of time to reflect and it really got us thinking about how far we've come over the past year and all of our successes and our trials. And it's sort of wild. Like we sometimes forget how far we've come. And it's been a journey. This time last year, while we were living in the dome, it was just a shell, like literally nothing. We had just finished putting up the exterior and the floor was still a deck. Yeah, we made the decision to put down an insulated subfloor and then an LVP over top of that. It keeps it nice and warm in here, but it was probably one of the most stressful <laughs> and difficult things we've ever done was trying to get all the angles of the floor correct because it's painful oh there are 15 sides to this building and the angle of all of them is completely different but we did hit a snag so the wood stove that we were going to put in to keep the building warm we were missing some parts for it so we could only go so far and then we had to kind of shift gears a little bit yeah but it gave us a good opportunity to have some free time to really upgrade that foldable kitchen table that we had. <laughs> it was nice to get that in and then we put in a butcher block countertop and then a farmhouse sink and it really came together. Well, I think that the island really helped too. So we found this cute little yeah. island with two stools that was 70% off at a furniture store and it just really completed the space and gave us extra space for prepping and cooking. With the wood stove and parts still on back order and some nice weather on the forecast, we decided to switch gears a little bit and start working on our electrical system. We built the ground mounts and then once they were up we were able to attach our solar panels and then the weather started to turn again so it actually turned while we were doing that project. We got a bunch of snow. It was really beautiful but it, it was cold. With the weather turning we made the decision to come back down to the dome but luckily the parts that we were waiting for for the wood stove had arrived so we were able to get to work on building the hearth because we didn't know the exact clearances. That was rough. Oh yeah. So we had to take the existing wood stove out which meant that we had no heat whatsoever. And let me tell you, tiling in minus five is not fun. Oh no, we had like space heaters going on a generator, but it just couldn't yeah. keep up like a wood stove. So we slept in the RV that night while it was all curing. And then we came back down and we were able to install the wood stove and... That was also quite a feat. That was a 500 pound wood yeah. stove. <laughs> it turns out the easiest way to move it in case you're ever installing a wood stove is just drop it on a blanket and drag that sucker across the floor. <laughs> Somehow though, we managed to DIY it and we got the wood stove installed. It's going right now. It's, yeah, it's we're warmed. warmed. Yeah, so. so. <laughs> Dome hasn't burnt down yet, so. <laughs> now that we were working our way through crossing off all of our necessities, like a kitchen and some heat, it was time to find somewhere to put all of our clothes. So we wanted to get the biggest closet we possibly could. We're so glad we did this. Oh yeah, and we also didn't quite understand how big it was until we actually <laughs> put it together. Turns out a nine foot closet is really tall. <laughs> it's nine feet, spoiler alert. But it works well. We're able to hide all of our clothing in there. We actually yeah. have like shoes, boots, all of our winter gear, and we even keep our big duvet for our bed in there. While still keeping the dome really open concept. That was something that was really important to us. We didn't want to have just like an ugly closet or like a wall blocking the 
view. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a great compromise. But now we felt as though the dome was a real home for us. So we decided to take a little bit of time off and just sort of focus on some more recreation and leisure time and yeah. enjoying the beautiful property that we're creating here. Yeah, I think one of the best things that we decided to do was expanding the pond. So making that decision literally gave us our own skating rink. We used it all the time last winter and we're really excited to be able to be using it again. Like for the rest of our life, we'll always have it. I really like the fact that like we're able to use it all through the year. So we have a seating area that in the summer we sit by it and we have it like shaded with a little fire there for evenings. But then in the winter it flips and we get rid of the lounges and we put chairs there and we have a fire pit and we're able to roast some hot dogs and marshmallows and just yeah. warm up while we're skating. It's a really cool space no matter what yeah. time of year. I really like that space, but as warm as you get by the fire, it's not quite as warm as our next project. We came up with the idea to build a cedar wood-fired sauna, which was an amazing project. It like we use it all the time. Sometimes we use it twice a day. It's so good for your health. Yeah. I love it. It's just really good on our bodies too because the projects that we do are quite labor intense and yeah. it's nice to just be able to relax and like release all those toxins out. So once that was done, we were actually kind of starting to enter into the end of winter, the beginning of spring. So while we were waiting for the ground to fully on thaw and we could get to work on the house, we decided to do some yard work around the dome. So through the winter, we had noticed this little area that looked like a natural path that went down the hill by the dome. Yeah. and. We just decided to put a wood chip trail on it and put a little seating area at the other end and it gives us a really cool view of the dome, I think. Yeah, and it just made the whole area that much more beautiful. Like there's trails for miles and miles all around here and making our own to connect in, it just it it just makes it feel more like home. Yeah. We still gotta get the wood chipper out of there though. <laughs> <laughs> With spring finally here, it was time to tackle one of the biggest projects we've ever attempted. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a big project. It was actually supposed to be a very simple one. Yeah. It, it got didn't ambitious really... quick. <laughs> yeah, it kind of spiraled out of control. So <laughs> all we wanted to do was build an outhouse. So what we did was we dug a hole and we put in this privy pit. It was what are those called? Culverts. Culverts, yeah. Like they're supposed to go under roads, but you can use them to code and like it's totally legit as like a holding tank. So we went with a really big one so we would never have to empty it. But what we didn't realize was our water table was so high here. So instead of it being a privy pit, it turned into more of a well. Yeah, so it was six feet deep and it filled to the five foot mark consistently. But we were hopeful that it was just the spring melt sitting high. So we still continued on with our plan. We wanted a quick win, so we actually found a really good deal on a used small shipping container building at an auction, and we said this is the perfect way to tie the dome space into the house, and that set us down the path of building a shipping container bathroom. So then once we had the container, we put in a foundation. We used helical piles just because we wanted it to last forever and not sink with the weight. We then had the shipping container craned on top of the foundation and put into place. It was really cool to see that happen happen, although the orange paint absolutely had to go. Yeah, so that was the first thing that we tackled. We got to work at removing the bars from the window and grinding off all the flaky paint. And that was so painful. That was two full days of just grinding and grinding. Yeah. It was rough. We had to pressure wash it, but oh, we yeah. didn't have, our well pump was broken, so we had to fill an IBC tote and put it uphill on the back of a truck to use gravity to come down <laughs> to go into the pressure washer. So then we gave that a scrub <laughs> and then we were like, oh, okay, let's paint it. So then we fired up a paint sprayer and- A lot of firsts. A lot of firsts, yeah. <laughs> and then we decided to paint the interior of the container just because we didn't want to finish it. And this is where the spiral started, thanks yeah. to you all. Yeah, this is all your fault, not us. So a lot of you pointed out that in the Canadian climate, we're probably not going to want to do our business in the cold, so yeah. why don't you insulate it? We said, sure. So that <laughs> set us down a path of building a 2 by 4 framing inside and using a DIY spray foam kit yeah. to insulate it. And then we wanted to take the insulation to the next level, and we had some reflective insulation sitting around, so we put one layer 
layer on and then put a two inch air space and another layer. That two inch air space is going to heat up when we have heat in there and yeah. that gives us even more insulation. The Reflectix makes a big difference. Yeah, it also keeps the sun and the heat out in the summer. So it does both, like it just keeps it a constant temperature. Yeah, so then once we finally had the building insulated, we said, okay, let's put down the flooring. So we did the exact same floor that we had in the dome. We had some leftover materials. So we put that down. We taped up all of the seams so there was no air gaps. And then it was time to get to work on the ceiling. So what we did for the ceiling was a knotty pine tongue and groove, which turned out really beautiful. We just used a natural stain on it to really bring out the grooves and grains and everything in it. And for the walls, we decided to do shiplap because we are not sheet rockers. And then once all of that was done, we got to work on all the trim, the molding, and then finally we had to fill all of the holes and paint. That was time consuming. Yeah. So at this point we checked the privy pit and we were still sitting high. This was a month later. So we made the decision to scrap the plan of cutting a hole in the floor. And we moved ahead with taking the composting toilet out of our RV and moving it to the outhouse since we no longer live in the RV. Yeah, which we're so glad we made that decision to do because now that building is airtight and warm. It's winter here right now and it's a warm building. It has a propane heater to power it. It has 200 watts of solar on the roof to provide electricity. It really is a true functioning bathroom. And yeah, it just, it really worked out for the best. An incredible amount of work, but we're glad that it happened the way that it did. Once we finally had a comfortable place to do our poos, we decided that it was time to move on to making some food. Don't worry, we washed our hands beforehand, but we wanted to get to work on gardening. So the goal here is to produce as much of our groceries as we can on the property. So we started off by planting our raised garden beds that we've had for a few years now, and they were doing well, but we really wanted to up the ante this year. And we had a massive 800 square foot area in front of the solar panels, so we figured it's a perfect place for a vegetable garden. It was a lot of work though. We had to pick out all of the rocks. We had to add so many loads of soil. We added manure and peat and just like a compost. Yeah, a lot of things. Then we got to work on tilling it all up and then we could finally build our rows. Once we had the rows, we were able to plant all kinds of things. We had pumpkins and cucumbers and ground cherries, potatoes, potatoes onions. So, just so many different things and it really started to become like a daily ritual for us. We would go out every evening and water them, but then we realized uh, this is a lot of work. So what we decided to do was install a drip irrigation system. It was tedious put, putting all the nozzles on and stuff. Over the course of the summer, it saved us so much time. With the warm weather finally here, we decided it was time to get back to work on the infrastructure and utilities here. So the first thing that we had to do was move our power building into place. So for this- Well, the first thing we had to do was level that whole area. Remember yeah. that? That yeah. was a mess. And you were so strong, you snapped a cement block in half. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Can so muscular. <laughs> <laughs> so once the pad was level, we had a shipping container similar to the one that we used for the outhouse lifted into place. And this is where all of our wires and plumbing was going to go to. Yeah, so having this in one central spot on the property would allow us to send electricity and water to any building that we needed. I thought it was a really good idea. I'm glad that we took that approach, but we still had a lot of work to do. We needed to do all of the trenching to send that water everywhere. Doing the trenching is something that I never, ever, ever want to do again. Also, oh, I- Oh, this is just our practice build. Once this is done, we're gonna do another one. <laughs> I'm never building again, ever, <laughs> ever. But doing the trenching, I hurt myself really bad. I slipped on a rock. It, like, my neck and back was, don't do it. <laughs> 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 was really really bad so we ended up taking a few weeks off just so I could heal it um, I was in pretty rough shape yeah while he was healing I was doing some just like maintenance and yard work around here so I was stacking our firewood for the winter and sort of oh yeah you stacked Todd stacked I think six or seven cord six cord in a day 
in a day all by himself yeah. down at the dome. Yeah, but I still can't snap a cement block in half, so. <laughs> <laughs> with Tyler finally feeling better, we were able to continue on with our trench work. So we had the water lines in four feet down and then we had to put two feet of soil over top of those so we could run our two inch conduit for our electrical lines so to the house. Work. So much work. Yeah, and then we were able to fill that extra two feet in, but that finished all the trench work. So we were- No, no it didn't, what remember? Was that? Remember after we fit, we thought the trench work was done and then we were like, oh, we don't have any drains for all of our, oh, do you remember that? I forgot about that yeah. again. So then, <laughs> so then what we had to do, we had to rip up everything for all of the drains for the bathroom. So all of the sinks, the showers, everything. The toilet, all yeah. of it. So all of that connected into the septic system. So we had to learn how to do underground plumbing that was a lot of work. I yeah. feel like we say that a lot, but that really, <laughs> that tested us. But then that was done, so we were able to bury it all in, and the house site was just about finished. The last thing we had to do was putting down a poly layer so that ground moisture didn't come up to the bottom of the house and yeah. rusted and rotted over time. We had no idea about any of this, by the way. We just did a lot of research. like. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds of hours of watching YouTube videos and just like learning these things. And everyone said to put down this poly, so we, we did, did it. it. Yeah. That was a lot of work too. By now it was midsummer, and we figured what better time to do firewood than the middle of July. So we put down this tarp and then we put pallets on top and then we were able to stack the firewood there so it would stay dry. And we got five cord delivered and we just crushed it in one day and we got it all perfectly stacked and I'm glad we took the time to do it. Yeah, and it only fell over once, and that was only half, so yeah. it was pretty good. That's a win. <laughs> With only two weeks until our house was supposed to arrive, we really took advantage of that downtime and started to explore our own backyard and yeah. found some new swimming holes and... That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like we just, we spent a lot of time in the river and just exploring. But it was short-lived yeah. because that was around the time that we were hit with a setback of the house. So the main beam that supports the upstairs on the main floor was manufactured across the country and that was delayed in fabrication and shipping so that meant that the house couldn't be put together until it was here. Yeah, so we were kind of like, well, what are we gonna do? Is it gonna be a week delayed or two weeks delayed? And it just kept dragging on and on. So we realized we were gonna be living in here longer than anticipated, so we wanted to make it comfortable. So the first thing that we did was we ripped out the old liner. So it had no insulating value to it. So we put in a layer of the reflective insulation, which has made such a difference. It was huge. We were then able to put another layer of reflective insulation over top, with the back of it being this nice green color, which we really like how that turned out. Yeah, we made other modifications yeah. to help with temperature in here. So we put a fan at the top of the dome, which has really helped us be able to circulate the warm air back down and up until that point we had been relying on portable battery banks to keep us charged so we had no outlets no electricity in the dome so what we did was we wired underneath the dome and had floor plugs put in all around we still didn't have the solar and our main system up and running so what we found was a portable battery bank that's able to directly wire into the electrical panel and we were able to recharge that using small foldable solar panels as well as our gas generator. So with our electric figured out, I think the thing that has made the dome most home for me has been redoing the kitchen. So yeah. the first thing we did was we built a wall behind the existing cabinet so that stuff stopped falling off of it and we put a shelf on the top for all of our most common used things. Then we built an island and I love it. It yeah. allows us to like, one can be in the kitchen and cooking and the other can be sitting at the island and cutting vegetables and- It's where we spend most of our time, yeah. to be honest. And we haven't been able to have this experience really since we moved into the first RV. So it's mm -hmm. been really special feeling like a home again. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful space. I really love it. But then we were like, okay, let's take this concrete board and let's actually put in a backsplash. And it turned out so nice. I, I love, love it. it. Yeah. And then we figured, okay, we've got nice cabinets over here. We might as well do something over where our electric is. So we put in another bank of cabinets over there. One of them is to hold our firewood. One of them is for our battery bank. And then another one is for our electrical panel. So at that point, the dome was pretty much finished. Everything was like nice inside. It was really feeling like a home. 
And then we thought, okay, we've got this nice wood-fired sauna. What if we put in something else next to it to match? And then we put in a cedar hot tub. Which I think was the icing on the cake. Yeah. It really completed the dome, which was something we were striving for. We wanted this whole area to be finished as a place of rest while we're building the house that we mm -hmm. could escape and not be living in construction here and going yeah. to work in construction over there. So now with the dome and the whole area finished and looking beautiful, we felt like we were on top of the world. The house was arriving in a few days, which was it just was such a magic time of our life. Oh yeah, I still, I think I'll always look back on that day. I love you and everything, but it might even beat our wedding day. It was just such a, we had just worked so hard. Not that we didn't work hard at our relationship, but like it was just such a milestone. A lot of people had said it couldn't I mean. be done or yeah. it wasn't going to work. And it was just, it was years of dreaming and everything just happening all at once, the, seeing the containers being lifted over the solar array that we built, seeing them all fused together, it, it's, it's hard to put into words what that felt like. It just felt like such accomplishment. And then, poof. Yeah. It literally went up in flames. So three or four days after, it was discovered that the spiral staircase on the main floor wasn't going to give us the proper clearances in the upper container for code. So our world literally felt like it came tumbling down and it was definitely a gut punch. Even now it's still a little hard to talk about, yeah. but. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm good. So we got to work behind the scenes fixing this mistake and figuring out what we were gonna do. And during that, we got hit with a hurricane. We spent weeks cleaning that up. So then we just continued on. We started our harvest. That was a really fun experience. Yeah. So with the harvest done, we were ready for Thanksgiving and Honestly, as if we hadn't been set back <laughs> enough, as we were getting ready to eat dinner that night, Tyler unexpectedly got sick and ended up in the hospital with not one, but two kidney stones and a ruptured esophagus or torn esophagus. Yeah, it was the most emotionally difficult time of my life, for sure. And luckily we took that as a sign and we actually took a couple weeks off yeah. from posting and just sort of like, regrouped and figured out a way forward. So after taking a few weeks off and really allowing my body to heal, we still had no update on the house. We didn't know what was going on and we were really preparing to set in to spend the full winter here. Yeah, so with the solar close to being running, this main electric system, we decided to put in a heat pump that would be able to keep the dome from freezing if we went away. We built this cabinet around just like a basic Ikea shelf. It turned out way better than I ever thought it would. I think it's an ultimate Ikea hack. Yeah, I think so too. So by this time, it had been three months months since the house had been craned into place and we were finally starting to get a direction of where we were going. However, we were waiting on the final engineering and permitting to be signed off on while we were waiting for all this to happen. We got a wood stove and that was really nice being able to put some heat in so we could do work there through the winter. Yeah, like obviously now we're in a winter build. We know that we're gonna be building it all winter long. So having it warm is really important. This three-sided fireplace it just is so beautiful. It, yeah. it really adds a lot to the space, but making sure that we have a way to keep the heat in was important, so we got to work on insulating. We had done so much research on the best form of insulation for a shipping container build, and for metal buildings, having spray foam is the best way to go because it prevents moisture from occurring. Underneath the containers, we had to mark the channel for our utilities to go through. And then once that was all done, it was time to start spraying, which was pretty cool because within a couple of days, the house was so warm and able to hold in all the heat we were producing. Yeah, it was really awesome to be able to stand in our house for the first time and actually be warm. It, in t-shirts. In t-shirts, yeah. It, it was a lot of work to get to that point, but it was awesome that we were able to get it done. However, we yeah. did realize <laughs> that, again, if no one's there putting wood on the fire, it's going to get cold in there. So that made us realize that we should probably have a secondary source of heat in there. We came up with the idea to install propane as a temporary measure. Plus, if the electrical system ever goes offline and we're not home and nobody's loading the wood stove, 
there, it will always be warm. There was trenching again, which I thought we had completely uh, yeah. finished I that. really thought that trenching would never happen again, but I guess you were right. Like, <laughs> it's always gonna be there. It's always gonna be there. So then all we needed to do was get a propane delivery, fill up the tank, and then fire up the furnace for the first time. Hearing that flame go on, I can't even tell you how freeing that felt. It was just, it was such a relief standing in our home and having heat and being warm and having to do nothing for it. I'm sure this doesn't sound that groundbreaking to you, but after three years for us, it was it was everything. It really changed things. For, for a while, we've been feeling as though we've been really bound to the property and have mm -hmm. to be here to keep things going because when we lose the heat, it's hard to start over again. Yeah. But that really changed things and so we didn't work on a project we decorated for christmas we got to go into the nearby city we live we went to dinners we spent time with family we went to a hockey game we did something that we haven't done in almost three years and that was allow ourselves to detach from all the projects here and not do anything yeah. which and social media too like it yeah. was a really it was it's important right like it's important to put your mental health first and to just be and like enjoy everything that we've created it it was nice it was really nice yeah and we couldn't have done it without all of you you are such a huge part of our lives and we just thank you all for inviting us into yeah. your home week after week every sunday it truly means the world to us it's truly like you could be spending your time right now watching absolutely anything on the internet there's such an abundance out there but you're choosing to spend time with us and it's not lost on us how much that means so thank you but we will see you next Sunday at our new posting time of 12 p.m. Eastern. And until then, have a great week, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.